Satellite imagery of our Earth, Urban Edition. 10 image scenes, starting with 1. Urban heat punching holes in fog. Landsat 8 imagery, false color band combination. A big hole in the fog cover right over New Delhi, India. A coincidence? Larger extent imagery on another date shows a similar hole over New Delhi and many other smaller fog holes, especially to the northwest. These holes match other city locations, and the size of the city correlates incredibly well with the size of the fog hole. The suspected cause is urban heat islands, reducing relative humidity at ground level and dissipating fog. An impressive feat, considering that urban aerosol pollution tends to do the opposite and encourage fog growth. Two, explosive urban growth, Shanghai, China, 1984 to 2019, Landsat imagery comparison. 1984 Shanghai occupies this pocket of land surrounded by forest. 2019 Shanghai just dominates the landscape, with additional land added to islands and shorelines to accommodate this explosive growth. I'll flicker between these two images a few times to emphasize that growth. The city population grew steadily through the late 20th century and then exploded during the first decade of the 21st century as investments in foreign trade markets rapidly developed, before a more recent leveling off as the export boom cooled. 3. Urban Heat Island, Atlanta, Georgia The urban heat island effect is well established and fairly well known. Landsat imagery from Landsat 4 onward include a thermal infrared band that can map surface temperatures and accompany visible color imagery like this scene for the city of Atlanta in the U.S. southeast. Here is the accompanying thermal imagery. I'll flicker between these a few times. Although the heat island effect is well known, I'm not sure everyone realizes just how strongly it spatially relates to urbanized land patterns, or how great its magnitude can be, especially for ground surface temperatures. This is the color scale. That's a range of over 10 degrees Celsius, close to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Or urban lights, or lack thereof, satellite images of Earth night lights have been around since the mid-1960s, but the resolution and radiometric quality of such imagery was vastly improved in 2011 with VIRS, DNB, that's Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite Day-Night Band. City lighting can be fairly reliable as a proxy for where people live, but the Korean Peninsula is a well-cited example of where that doesn't work. South Korea, gleaming with city lights, especially from its capital city, there above the S. And North Korea, hardly any lighting, other than a faint glimmer from its capital, there being rudely stepped on by the K. Also note the massive sprawl of lighting for Shanghai to the southwest, and the interesting lines and clusters of illuminating fishing boats in the Yellow Sea and in the Sea of Japan. Five, urban patterns in light and in snow. Another night lights image from Veers, showing a constellation of illuminated cities and some major transportation corridors in a region of central China. Same area in visible color imagery, shown a few days after a significant snowfall event. Open water stands out, and you can also see the same urban pattern as an inverse of intensity, more of a gray on white instead of the previous glowing white on black. I'll do the flicker again to show the near perfect alignment with land use signatures between these images. Regarding the urban pattern visible in the snow, there's the pristine white snow cover over most of the countryside. The gray city areas and road corridors result from clearing of snow, dirting of snow by particulate contamination, as well as snow melt from urban heat island effects. Six, holiday lights. This is not just another regular Veers day-night band image. This shows the difference in lighting between Christmas, New Year, holiday season versus the rest of the year. Here's the color scale. Red is for less light during the holiday season. Not very many pixels showing that. Yellow for no change. And green for greater light, which there is a lot of, especially in many of the major city suburbs where a lot of the holiday lighting goes up. Here is a plot showing the seasonal pattern of lighting change based on the viewer's satellite remote sensing. There's a lot of scatter, but that holiday season peak is definitely significant. 
I think it's amazing that this signature of culture is being captured like this from space. Different cultural signals are reported for other parts of the world too, relating to the timing and geographic patterns of other holidays and traditions. 7. Urban Layout Development, Cleveland, Ohio In the 1800s, most people of Cleveland lived and worked in the walkable downtown area. By the early 1900s, dense, gridded streetcar communities like Lakewood developed. By mid-century, with the car, expansive, outlying neighborhoods like Seven Hills with abundant cul-de-sacs became vogue, and the city became an aviation hub and hosts a major NASA research center. A nice image for showing urban layout change over time. What I liked about preparing this slide was learning about this freely available source of Earth photographs by astronauts aboard the International Space Station. 8. Lawns in the Desert This imagery is of Arizona, Central North Phoenix area, Paradise Valley, some of Scottsdale. It's recent Landsat imagery, a false color band combination where vegetation, especially lush green vegetation cover, shows as bright red. Fairly natural ground cover areas include Camelback Mountain at bottom center right, and the bigger Phoenix Mountain Preserve area, center left, appearing yellow brown. Developed areas, of course, have the road network, and many large buildings show up with reflective roofs appearing white. Another big difference from the more natural desert ground cover is all the irrigated vegetation, much of which is lawns and other landscaped vegetation. Many of the larger red areas are golf courses and some irrigated crops on the far right edge, also appearing bright red. Urban residential areas throughout the U.S. have a high fractional coverage of grass area, regardless of climate zone. 9. Global Monitoring of Nitrogen Dioxide a pollutant primarily produced by vehicle emissions. NO2 is associated with asthma, and it is a precursor to other harmful compounds like ozone. The space-borne ozone monitoring instrument uses hyperspectral imaging to study several key atmospheric pollutants. When calibrated with ground observations, the instrument allows for spatial monitoring at a global scale. Worldwide, urban pediatric asthma attribution to NO2 has shown an improving trend but there are major concerns in much of the South and Southeast Asia and elsewhere, where NO2 concentrations have still been increasing, as you can see on the global imagery. 10. At the extreme other end of spatial scale, commercial remote sensing companies like Maxar provide very high resolution imagery products suitable for individual building or construction site urban applications. Maxar's Worldview 3 satellite, for example, provides multiple submeter image products. These four images are visible color samples of such ultra high resolution imagery. Unlike all the other imagery products shown in this video, this kind of imagery does not provide for global coverage and for the most part is not freely available. Here are thumbnails and titles for the 10 urban themed satellite imagery scenes reviewed in this video, which covered a big range in types of imagery and scales of analysis. Is there one of these that you found most interesting? If so, let me know in the comments. I'll give a tally if enough votes come in, and I'll look into doing a more focused video for that pick. See video text for images and data sources, and thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, or watch more Geography Viz.